We would like to welcome you all to the 27th edition of the Analyst Meeting webinar series. My name is Prashant Udrani, conference producer for AIM, and I'll be your MC for today. The Analyst Meeting is the largest investment platform in the world, an initiative of the UAE Ministry of Economy. AIM has been promoting a healthier global economy by linking investment opportunities to fast-growing economies under six key pillars, foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, small and medium enterprise, startups, and future cities with a special event, One Belt, One Road. We would like to thank our multilateral partner, Islamic Corporation for the Development of the Private Sector for sponsoring today's webinar. Just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. If you experience any issues with your audio or video during the webinar, just refresh your browser and that should take care of everything. We would suggest using Chrome, Firefox or Opera. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question box in the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. If the question is addressed to a particular speaker, please do mention their name at the start of the question. If you like a specific question, vote for it under the question tab so we can address it to our speakers. During the webinar, we will be running live polls located besides the question tab. We would request you to participate by casting your votes. In the panel discussion today, we will cover the topic, special economic zones and their effectiveness in attracting FDI during a crisis. Our speakers will be discussing the advantages of having SEZs, how SEZs are innovating to attract new business, what are they doing during the crisis situation. I would now like to introduce the moderator for today's webinar, Mr. Adarsh Verma. Adarsh is an economist with 15 years consultancy experience for public and private sector clients. Adarsh specializes in urban economic development, business care analysis, economic appraisals for infrastructure and development projects. He is particularly interested in solutions that demonstrate a positive financial and economic rate of return. He has developed business model and strategies, strategic cases that capture wider economic, social, environmental, and governance benefits to judge viability of projects. He has worked on projects in the UK, Europe, Africa, and Asia for multilateral financial institutions, public and private sector. He'll be joined by a panel of experts. Adarsh, I would request you to please take it from here. Thanks, Prashant. Good morning, good afternoon. Hello to everyone. Welcome to this webinar um, on special economic zones and their effectiveness to attract FDI. Uh, we all know we are living in and working in a very strange and unprecedented times. COVID has had a significant economic impact. My company, Bureau Happold, uh, which is an engineering and planning and economic consultancy, have been working in the space of industrial development zones uh, and eco parks for the last 10 years. And we bring in planning as well as economic and financial expertise in the design and implementation of zones. SEZs, as we all know, have been a very important policy re reform for attracting FDI, increasing jobs, exports, helping countries diversify the industrial sectors, and also increase their local economic performance. But these are very challenging times for the 5,000 odd zones around the world. According to UNCTAD, FDI flows are likely to decline by around 40% in 2020 21. The World Trade Organization expects world trade to fall by around 13 to 32% in 2020. We are seeing sectors like automotive and tourism and some consumables being severely impacted in terms of their earning potential. And in the developing world, this is creating a perfect storm capital reversal, currency depreciation, high cost of borrowing health and livelihoods being severely affected. This is already on top of balance and payment deficits and very poor quality and inclusive growth. So that's the negative story out of the way. Today, we have an esteemed group of experts on this topic. I'd like to introduce our, our panel. I have, uh, we have today um, from, uh, from DP World, Mr. Ahmed Al Haddad. He's the chief operating officer in charge of the UAE's region's parks and zones, which includes National Industries Park and Dubai Auto Zone. Mr. Haddad joined DP World in 2005, and under his leadership, uh, Jabal Ali Free Zone has increased by 18%, and he has also increased the free zone market share. Mr. Haddad, welcome to the webinar. We have Mr. Ahmed bin Sulaim um, in the panel as well. He is the chief executive officer of DMCC Free Zones. 
and has driven its growth from a startup of just 28 member companies in 2003 to the world's leading free zone in 2019 with over 17,000 member companies from 170 countries and employing over 60,000 people. So, Mr. Clare, welcome, welcome to the webinar. I should also, also mention that the MCC won the Global Free Zone of the Year by the Financial Times FDI magazine for five consecutive years. So, Mr. Suleyam, many congratulations. We've got Mr. Gustavo Gonzalez de Vega, who is the president of the American Free Zones Association and board member of the World Free Zones Organization. He's had a very checkered career working in foreign affairs, finance and economy for the central services in Tenerife. He speaks reg regularly in international conferences in the field of international trade and free zone regime. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Lastly, we've got Dr. Dragan Kostek, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Piro Free Zone in Serbia. He has won numerous awards for his contribution to business and economic development. Best Serbia Award from the Serbian Chamber of Commerce, Businessman of the Year 2011 and 2012, and gold medal for his outstanding contribution to the development and promotion of regional economy of Serbia. And, and in October 2014, he was, he was elected as the member of the World Federation of Free Zones for his 30-year contribution in this area. So welcome to all the panel. I would like to head to the first question, which I would ask all the panel members to respond to. How has the crisis or pandemic affected your free zone? I'll start with Mr. Hadad, if you could give your views, please. Uh, good afternoon and good morning to whoever, whoever is still uh, uh, before uh, still serving his, uh, his morning time. Uh, for us, uh, you know, if we talk about the uh, of the, the current situation that we passed through in the last uh, few months, I think uh, I would be uh, very honest to say that no one ever prepared us uh, for such uh, situation. No business continuity plan, no risk treatment plan have prepared us to such uh, situation. But for a, for a global company, for a, for a company who's, uh, who'd only last two weeks been a public listed company, we have our uh, governance uh, team and we have to report high compliance uh, levels to, to, to our auditors and to our uh, stakeholders. So you can imagine the, uh, the measures that we have in, in, in place. But even saying saying this, I, I I will be I'll be very honest that it had a negative and still positive uh, impact on us. If if for us uh, we are, we are a reason that is focused on trade and logistics. Of course, uh, trade. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, please please go ahead, Mr. Hadal. We can hear you. Of course, uh, as, as as you know, Jabal Ali is, is focused on trade and uh, logistics. Uh, we've seen numbers uh, in certain industries uh, went down, but also certain industries have really uh, grew in the last uh, three months, uh, double digits, food sector, medical sector. Of course, e-commerce have uh, doubled uh, in the last three months compared to, to, to last year. So. There is certain areas that we that got affected, and we are working with those industries to 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 help them out. And there is a certain industry that uh, benefited from uh, the situation, and we are working to to really improve uh, this kind of uh, uh, achievement they've uh, they've gained and help them even expand further to from from the region. So the Dubai today is a gateway for the for the whole region, and Jabal Ali is playing a vital role in in, in this, and we want to continue doing and playing this role. Thank you, Mr. Adar. Um, Gustavo, are you experiencing similar uh, similar uh, opportunities and challenges in your zones? Yeah, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, okay, as president of an uh, entire region, I would like to speak uh, about our Ibero-American region. You know, uh, 26 countries in, in two continents, uh, also in Spain. So this health crisis is so different in, in time and geographically. 
I think uh, we, we have a different impact. But I, I think the, the common point in this crisis is the, the COVID-19 uh, have been the catalyst of the digitalization, for sure. Because we have been working for a long time in new trends about industrial revolution uh, 4.0, but the COVID-19 has been this catalyst, authentic catalyst uh, for those trends and that we are visualizing in our future songs, but maybe we have not been uh, fully promoted yet. So I think this is the, multi, uh, the, the, the most important impact. Um, this is only one of the new changes. I think uh, we're, uh, speaking recently uh, with a friend uh, from Costa Rica, uh, Juan Carlos Hidalgo, uh, told us uh, maybe in uh, the last few years uh, we have a living uh, the transition from the globalization uh, to a slowization. Uh, we are living many changes uh, as, for example, uh, from the offshoring, uh, the locate uh, productive phases in different countries, changing mm -hmm. to business education. Uh, also, uh, the global value chains changing to regional value chains. The increase for, for many years, increasing the, the FDI, the global FDI, to reduce, a substantial reduce, or increasing the global trade to this uh, aspect in, in 2020 uh, is 30% uh, less. So I think the real impact is how our free design uh, have to adapt to new context, new reality, in which uh, everything is new. Uh, we have been in, in the past in the globalization, and we are changing to uh, new markets, new sectors, digital economy mainly, mm -hmm. and finally new tools, the e-commerce, for example, or 3D printing. I would like to, to speak about that in the next question. That's a really mm -hmm. That's a really interesting point, Gustavo. We'll come back to the point about regionalization of supply chain again in, in the webinars. Thanks for raising that. Mr. Mr. Suleyam, may I come to you now about, about your view? DMCC have had a range of different sectors and, and, and uh, different types of activities in your zone. How have you been impacted by the COVID crisis? You're on mute, Mr. Uh, Suleyam. We've been monitoring the COVID uh, issue for a while before it became a, a pandemic. Um, I was in Wuhan just about two years ago. So China is a very important market for us. Uh, and uh, the lockdown started in China, if everyone remembers carefully. Uh, uh, we, uh, my last business trip was to San Francisco and Houston, um, which was part of our Future of Trade workshops. I visited some of our potential and actually going to be a new member of the Diamond Foundry in San Francisco. But during the workshop, uh, one of the participants there, John Picard, uh, brought up an, a good point. And this is early March, mind you. So the airports have not shut down around mm -hmm. the world. You know, it's still uh, a Chinese, Asian, ASEAN issue at that, at that time. Uh, John said something interesting during the workshop. He said, look, we have to prepare for when the world comes back, the economies. Uh, uh, are, are back in full gear. China will be back. China's not going anywhere. And what he meant by that was uh, there will be a blip, there will be a pause, fine. But, you know, let's not get, let's not fool ourselves that, you know, uh, business uh, border will be shut and airports will be shut forever. Um, it's the way businesses are done. So, for example, it's not going to be, uh, um, you know, things that, uh, if it's agri, you know, organic or freight trade, it's going to be, you know, make sure that it's COVID free. The packaging will be different. It's kind of like the driving industry. We didn't wear seat belts when we started, and then that became part of it. So it's it's how we adapt to it. So um, it sounds very simple when I say it, but it just conditioned my mind not to be distracted when the uh, pandemic was in full swing. Um, what we did was we. Uh, We've been blessed that we've, uh, we've, we are very strong digitally. We have a lot of uh, uh, products on the digital side of the services. I mean, if you see on our chat, I sent everyone uh, a link to the DMCC website and the Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange, which is 
is an online trading platform. That's an exchange we planned to build early 2004, launched in 2005. We skipped the part of it being an open outcry. It's a fully electronic uh, exchange. And uh, that's been our, in our DNA. Our first product is Dubai Commodity Receipts. Today it's called Tradeflow, an online warehouse receipt system. So it goes without saying our marketing, our connection with our 17,000 companies is all online. I'm very accessible on all my social medias to the more to the very important questions, to the to the uh, trolls I, I have to deal with every now and then. But uh, it's, it's in DMCC's nature to do that. One thing that surprised me by my uh, team is that we have uh, um, we have an experience with a company called Think uh, ThinkLab.ae, which is uh, I guess they're uh, like an Air not an Airbnb actually, no, like an Uber for property, but more of giving you access to any property around the world using 3D augmented reality and all that. And uh, the, and I asked them, I met with them after they set up their company, and I said how did you find the service with DMCC? Because I can depend on my team to give me updates, but I always ask the clients, you know, it's easier. Mm -hmm. You get the real deal over there. Sometimes it's not very true. Sometimes the their uh, PRO is exaggerating or being lazy. We go through, I've, I've gone through all of that. It's all fun and games. But they said something interesting. They said, oh, we didn't have to come. I'm like, no, you had to come to sign up. There's like one part we have to see you in the physical form because I'm, I'm personally paranoid about doing everything online. I'm always worried about this super hacker that's going to have deep fake and, and crack it all through and he said no we did we did do it online and i'm like could you explain what were the steps and he said look we had to raise our right hand show our id do this facial recognition etc but he made a good point saying that whatever security measures they've uh, given it's no better than coming in person it's pretty much almost the same give or take so i, I was fine with that given that it's the COVID pandemic um, what was more important for us was we stayed in touch with our members and in these difficult times where booking.com is, uh, is a mess, some banking systems is a mess, uh, places in Europe, the hospital, the healthcare system is a mess. I mean, I just saw a headline that 50 plus percent of people in England that go to the ICU don't make it. So people are distracted. It's very important that from a human side, you're, you're connecting with your members. And I have to say the team in DMCC did that really well. Our core stuck together. And we've had uh, we've had 15 webinar roadshows, you know, hosted, attracted over 870 participants, uh, markets, uh, including the US, UK, Italy, Germany, uh, Turkey, Switzerland, Ukraine, China, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and South Africa. And these are including the business uh, uh, councils relevant or the experts relevant to those industries so it's not just us engaging with them it's also uh, familiar faces people from their country members who are from their country operating and um, in some ways I, I, I hate I, 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 I know how this sounds but I would I would argue that my best year ever in my last 19 years working with DMCC is right now this is where I feel the most confident um, we, uh, we have two projects in Javza South. Ahmed Al Haddad is very familiar with it. Um, I think he attended the launch uh, over a year ago. And he, uh, he attended, uh, uh, he came to the uh, day where we hosted the Dubai FDI delegation, where we announced we're tripling the size of our operation. Now, uh, you know, the tea center stores about 5 million kilograms capacity of tea. Um, the coffee center can store about a little over 10 million. Um, but we have to triple the, these these uh, these capacities because after his highness visit about a week three weeks ago or so we've we've got we've gotten a lot of orders and these are not the normal orders so if i would give the example of jabal ali port the port would be let's say servicing the small boats medium sized boats but then you have these big fleets they could but then they'd lose the small and medium uh, businesses we don't want to. We want. We don't want to. We don't want to re replace what we what we have for the big players. We'd rather expand for them, and this is just capitalizing on Dubai's strength as a as a redistribution hub and the efficiency and consistency of it. Um, coming back to the question on the pandemic, March and April, where everything was pretty much shut as far as retail is concerned, um, was a boost for our tea and coffee center. A lot of these coffee shops had an oversupply of what of, of the coffees they have, they had to store it somewhere. They don't have the facilities. And even if they did, it's not enough. And they won't. 
Oh, we seem to have lost, seem to have lost Mr. Sulaim. Uh, I'm sure Prashant, you can check. Um, we'll keep the discussion going. Uh, Mr. Dragon, do you want to give your views on the impact of the crisis in the short term? Okay, good day for all participants. Uh, the crisis uh, came in our region uh, uh, in uh, March this year. Uh, we are uh, here a regional uh, office for World Free Zone Organization. We monitoring uh, all the activities from the Free Zone for Southeast Europe. And uh, uh, the uh, crisis uh, is uh, reduced uh, many activities in the Free Zone in April and uh, part of uh, one part of the May. Uh, it is uh, in, in uh, production almost 85% of reduced activities of so our production company. It mm -hmm. uh, so big in part. And uh, logistic is better. Logistic is 65% in this, in this uh, uh, period. And services is uh, uh, 50% reduced. It is a very important thing the services in the free zone is uh, still alive. In this mm -hmm. uh, moment where there is uh, the crisis is the peak of the crisis. After that, uh, in the, uh, June, June and July, we recover our production. Now production is uh, um, our, uh, almost all production company in the free zone is the, now in the, uh, planning. Uh, they they, they uh, have uh, uh, some measures from uh, healthy and uh, measures for production, special me measure. Uh, they now produce I think 10% uh, less on the uh, of activities from uh, be, uh, uh, before crisis. I think it is uh, um, uh, it is signed that uh, in free zone and uh, all the production have his plans from crisis and starting production with uh, this uh, uh, in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, I I don't know. It is not good, but in this. Uh, uh, um, kind of activities in crisis times. Great. Thanks. Thanks for that. Very interesting to hear that some activities are holding up and some activities have declined, as Mr. Haddad was also saying, just seeing this uh, substitution between sectors. There are some really interesting questions coming up on incentives given by Free Zone. So I would request all the participants to keep sending their questions for the panelists, and I'll try to pick up on, on some of the questions which are not being covered in the discussions. Um, and uh, probably it's a good time to take a poll on incentives and, and then have a discussion around it. So uh, let's let's uh, let's bring up our first poll question for the audience. Um, and and while while that's happening, um, so your questions are: Which measures has your SEZ taken? or considering to attract investment during the pandemic. Um, more marketing efforts, um, seeking support from government agencies, reaching out to existing in investors, uh, as, as Suleim was mentioning, Mr. Suleim was mentioning, provide more or tailored incentives to investors. Please, uh, please cast your vote. I think you've got 30 seconds to cast your vote. Um, while, while the audience is casting their vote, uh, Mr. Haddad, what do you see as the role of incentives in attracting investors? Is, is it going to change? Are you changing certain incentives you're providing? I mean, there is a lot of emphasis on financial incentives for free zones across the world. You know? and, and free zones like you have set the standard of providing really good, really good infrastructure, really good services, not just financial incentives. Can, can you give us some views on, on the incentive? framework um, I'll give I'll give you an example we are we, we are a global company today uh, we have a similar concept to Jabal Ali in many countries at least 20 countries uh, we are located in more than 44 countries we have 90 different locations if you if you if, if you ask me do we have similar incentives similar uh, services no it's different it, it is it depends on the country you're operating it depends on the economy that you're operating in and how you really tailor the incentives uh, for your for your customer. For example, here in, in, in United Arab Emirates, 
uh, an expat or uh, an international uh, investor, he can't own 100% license in, in, in the country. Of course, recently, uh, not recently, last year, uh, the cabinet of uh, UAE have approved uh, certain uh, industries to own 100%, but still the majority need to have a, a local sponsor or a partner uh, on mainland. So one of the major incentives that you own your business when you are operating in a free zone, whether it is in, in Jabal Ali free zone, the MCC, depends where which free zone you have picked in, 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 in Dubai. Uh, other incentives, I think fi financial incentive is, is, is a short-term thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the long-term uh, incentives, there is a lot. We are a tax-free uh, free zone. We are a VAT-free uh, free zone. All of this really contributes to a successful uh, business. We have customers who move their manufacturing units, uh, who move their trading units from, from their home country to, to, to our area. Uh, first, to be closer to their, uh, to, their, to their customer. Today, their customer base can be 3 billion people. Jabal Ali can connect you to 3 billion people. Uh, you have 8,000 uh, different companies uh, working with you, whether it is logistics or trading or services. All of them are part of one ecosystem. So there is direct incentives through through the free zone, and there is indirect benefits, uh, intangible benefits. Let let's say for uh, for uh, the free zone. But to have certain uh, uh, certain incentive copied across the portfolio is very difficult. Mm -hmm. In UAE, as you know, UAE population is only 1.2 million or 1.3 million, uh, if I'm if, if I'm correct. So to have manufacturing or to have number of uh, investors coming here without the manpower is difficult. So one of the incentives that we allow you to bring any kind of uh, expertise or labor from any part of the world to work uh, with you. In other countries, they won't allow you. Mm. They will allow. They will only allow their home country uh, people and laborers and, and skilled uh, employees to, uh, to work. So it's a tailored thing. Uh, incentives can be different. It cannot be copied from one free zone to another. In Jafza, we have, of course, uh, seven to eight incentives that are unique to Thank you, Mr. Hadad. We were having some connection issues uh, with you. Uh, Gustavo, can you can I ask you the same question as well? Especially if the government uh, is providing additional incentives or any changes uh, during this pandemic to support SEZs in attracting investments. Uh, okay, uh, in our region, is many countries is so different the, the regulation in in each each one. Um, I think. The most important thing uh, right now during the crisis, uh, at, at least, uh, the tax benefit so important is our so uh, we we were created for that for this benefit tax. Uh, however, during the crisis, I think our customers, our companies, uh, was looking for more than benefits, more than benefits because uh, they they need. The warranties of supply stock, uh, the multimodal logistic um, collectivity, and of course, uh, we our companies are looking for uh, digital services and infrastructure, uh, even uh, cybersecurity. We have in a new age in which uh, our uh, labors uh, from the, uh, these companies, uh, a lot of them are, are working from uh, their home. So. Uh, I think our companies demand right now, at least uh, I say during the crisis, these digital services, infrastructure uh, services, uh, and this is uh, which we, we call the free zones uh, 4.0, uh, mm -hmm. smart free zones, digital free zones. Uh, I, I, I said before, uh, an ecosystem. Uh, in, in which interrelated activities, multimodal with ports, airports, tracks, railway, uh, railway systems, all connected with uh, product. So I think this is the most important thing right now. For the benefit. And, and let me uh, show an example. Uh, 
in, in these free zones in which uh, more than benefits, uh, our free zones uh, have been investing in digital infrastructure. I, I am speaking about 3D printing. We have uh, free zones, uh, Science Park in Montevideo or Zona Franca de Barcelona in Spain. It is the same free zone uh, uh, who invest in this infrastructure, the 3D printer, and during the crisis, uh, this 3D printer to uh, use for the companies inside the free zone, uh, it, it was a, a real re re uh, repercussion uh, mm -hmm. because when the uh, logistic connectivity, uh, we have problems with that, or the stock, uh, it was broken, especially in medical devices, this 3D printer uh, to, uh, to supply these medical devices in, in time and uh, directly from the cloud to this place, and we needed uh, these medical devices. So I think this is a great example as the investment in digital infrastructure, it was a, 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 a good practice uh, just during this crisis. But I think it's not only during this crisis because the new age, the next step in this economy context is, is in this 4.0. Great. Thanks for that. Kind of uh, point, point to take from here is, is that financial incentives is not enough. You know, you cannot, you cannot differentiate yourself uh, with other competitors just by financial incentives. And Mr. Haddad was also making that point. That's very important to tailor the incentives according to the zone and different geography. Um, we've got the results from the first poll here. Uh, which measures has your SEZ taken or considering to attract investment during the pandemic? 40% um, said reaching out to existing investors, which are that kind of cements Mr. Soleam's point, you know, look after your existing investors well. 37 uh, said that provide more tailored incentives to investors and uh, and only 14 for more marketing efforts. So so that that was the outcome of the of the first poll. Um, just wanted to move to another discussion point on 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 marketing measures. Mr. Soleim, uh, can you give us from your experience uh, what successful marketing strategies? have you adopted uh, to attract more investment into your zone? And especially as Gustavo was saying, um, have you seen the shift towards more digital marketing strategies? And you were mentioning about more webinars um, and, and having more uh, digital-based uh, systems. Well, as, uh, as you were speaking earlier, I just retweeted a tweet from DMCC where we're uh, inviting our uh, members to learn uh, to increase uh, their own customers with effective business marketing strategies to join our webinar on 28th of July to get insights and experts and the link to register. I just shared it myself as you're doing that before you ask the question. Mm. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we, we, we're hungry in DMCC. You know, we're, we're not the only free zone in, in Dubai. We're very competitive. I have to say, it's not just the competitiveness in Dubai that drives us. We also operate in one of the most unforgiving communities in some cases, unless they're fans and part of the success, they can be very critical. Um, we also understand where our limits are. So there's a good reason why the tea and coffee center were established in Javza South. Uh, um, that's because it's a custom bonded area. And um, the, we faced a little bit of a risk uh, late 2017 and early in 2018 when uh, the UAE announced uh, uh, taxes on gold and diamonds. And I raised my concerns during the Dubai conference in 2017. Um, it was an uncomfortable position I was put in, but I had to speak up. I, had, I was faced with the uh, uh, option of making the mistake of speaking up early or wait when it's too late and the 40 billion, around $40 billion of diamonds disappearing and 80 or 60 to $80 billion of gold disappearing forever. So, you know, in my speech, mm -hmm. I did touch on that, say that these are the same mistakes that Holland did where it drove away their diamond industry forever to Belgium and everywhere else. And for the gold, it's the same with the uh, Germans. Uh, they 
drove away their uh, gold business to Luxembourg and everywhere else. And I also mentioned that there were gold refineries looking to set up in Hong Kong, two mm -hmm. UAE refineries looking to set up. Now look what changed since those times. Uh, just recently, I, th I think about two weeks ago, Al-Ittihad Gold Refinery, a DMCC-based refinery, uh, which is D Dubai Good Delivery approved refinery, was approved for COMEX delivery. So it's the delivery point for the COMEX exchange. And that shows you where DMCC is. I mean, the attraction mm -hmm. for these members is more about the market, the engagement. Yes, word of mouth goes a long way, but I don't want to relax. My team doesn't want to relax. We monitor these things around the clock. We we use, uh, uh, what's the right word for it? Uh, uh, we use the algorithm. We use Google Analytics. Yes, we use Google mm -hmm. Analytics. We're linked with Weibo, WeChat. Um, India blocked Weibo and WeChat, their, their, their choice. That brought more business on the digital side for us. We've, we've signed a, an agreement with Crypto Valley uh, earlier this year before I went to the US. I was in Zurich and then I, I signed the agreement with them in Davos. That's to roll out a crypto and blockchain ecosystem in our free zone. So it's not, we're not only limited to the land that we have. No, there's also a crypto uh, ecosystem that uh, we're looking uh, to establish and attract businesses relevant to that. We have a successful uh, story with our strategic partnership with the uh, Astro Labs, the Google Tech Hub, attracting entrepreneurs and businesses from all over. And they've expanded three times since they've set up their small facility in Almas Tower and moved them somewhere else in, uh, in, uh, in DMCC. Um, look, it, 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 just, it just depends what lens you're looking at the opportunities are. There will always be challenges. There will always be nightmares. But if you just look at them as a stop and that's it, you look at the negative side of it, you won't move. But if you look at the opportunity, yes, I, 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 I was, I was, uh, when the when the pandemic and the shutdown happened, I, 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 I I'm not gonna lie. I, I got afraid. I, yeah. it froze me because I didn't. Ex my next leg after Houston was gonna be South Africa for the made for trade live shows. And I had everything set up. I mean, uh, you're talking about a network from about 18 years building relationships with the African producing countries and the businesses related to DMCC. There's a reason why we represent today probably over 18,000 businesses. Um, I expect DMCC to attract in 2020, just 2020, um, at least 1,600 companies if we don't reach 2,000. Uh, there's an engagement, there's a confidence, mm -hmm. and the fact that the UAE has been very tight on the COVID pandemic has also been an attraction to people. People want to stay here, set up their business. They do feel safer than other places. We, we outrank many other cities and countries. So um, that's, as, as, as some might feel constrained with their movements and all, but it's also paying off. Um, just coming back to, uh, to, to the opportunities here, um, we, we, we're using the same successful recipe we put together for the tea and coffee center to also establish a spices, chili, and cacao center within Javza. I had to ask Ahmed permission before we put that on the press release. And I was, because I, I was wondering if they're running out of space, they would like us to be there. But even my relationship with Javza changed. Previously, they felt we're getting too much subsidies. They could get bigger players like the Nestle's or the whoever who pay higher rents. But today they see the value because Ahmed also represents DP World and he sees how much operation uh, the Jabal Ali port gets, the, the port's operation for the tea and coffee mm -hmm. business. So things are looked at in, in a different way. Um, for our members, uh, we, we, uh, we see them adapting as well. I've, I've sat in the client service center, just listened to their uh, orders, what they look for. And I'll give you a nice example. Um, I sat and I heard, I, I see how fast my client service department reacts and all that. But one person had a long discussion and, you know, he was asking about liquidation here, a takeover there. And the, the conversation went on for a while. After he was done, I was having my COVID mask and I thought I was the undercover CEO, as you can, as you say. And I said, uh, you know, my name is, and he goes, yeah, I know who you are. And I'm like, okay, fine. I just want to know if uh, you're happy with the service. He says, extremely happy. I told him, I noticed that 70% of your conversation was questions, not uh, needs that you wanted at that moment. Would it be beneficial if, uh, if we made a video for that of how to ship, how to uh, uh, put your uh, company 
uh, on sleep mode, you know, what, what, you know, having this information beforehand, would it save you time? He said, absolutely. So within a week and a half, we had those videos and it's now on our website. Um, sometimes you don't need to wait for an issue to be raised 10 times. You, you, you ask the question and it does get better. You know, there are yeah. ways of polishing and, and enhancing your services. Even though we were at the top, I am expecting DMCC to get their six, six uh, global free zone of the year. And if, we, if, if our performance is any indication of us uh, being the top of the line this year, then we'll probably get it for next year in to, uh, 2021 as well. That's great. Thanks, Mr. Suleyem. Uh, I mean, both your points and uh, Gustavo's point just highlights the importance of digital marketing strategies in the current, um, in a current uh, situation and, and these opportunities which the digital marketing strategies present. So, so thanks for these inputs. And, and there have been some really interesting questions on the chat around these technologies. So um, I'm glad you both are pick picking up these points. There's, there's been a question on, will we see SEZs adopt high tech technology like augmented reality in choosing space, office and facilities? Uh, that that's something uh, I think I think you can consider along with your Google Analytics. Um, there's a really interesting question here, which I would like to ask the panel. Uh, this is from uh, Kausar Amman Nazia. They're asking, can a free zone uh, cooperate with other free zones for investment attraction, or is it a far fetch idea? Do you see opportunities for cooperation? among free zones in a, in a particular area, in a region. And uh, maybe, maybe uh, Hada, do you, Mr. Hada, do you want to answer this question? Uh, I think uh, Ahmed spoke about it, uh, about the, 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 the cooperation that we have uh, together between DMCC and, uh, and Javza and DP World. Uh, but this is just one, uh, one example. Today, we have the coffee center of DMCC uh, we have the clients of DMCC uh, storing and trading with their business through 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 Javza. We have another free zone called Dubai South, as part of Al Maktoum International Airport, is also uh, focusing on air flight and air logistics. Uh, today, we have shipment coming in, at nine o'clock in the morning from China in Jabal Ali Port, and by nine o'clock in the afternoon uh, at night, it will be somewhere in Europe or even in America. Uh, this kind of uh, cooperation we have with Dubai South or Al Maktoum Airport is 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 an advantage point uh, for us. So Ahmed, when he needs coffee from somewhere in Latin America, it is only a matter of hours before it is his uh, in his uh, uh, warehouse or with his customer. So this kind of cooperation today, without uh, us working together as one unit, as one Dubai organization, it would never happen. So if if you ask of my recommendation. It is very helpful. Mm. Uh, our customers really benefit from uh, from such cooperation. Uh, today, for example, the MCC clients can rent warehouses in, 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 in Jabal Ali without having to register with uh, with us. This kind of uh, benefits and cooperation between organizations have really added value to the economy and to our investors. Mm. Absolutely. Great. Um, Let's take another poll question, uh, this time on the role of uh, SEZs, um, uh, the future role of SEZs for economic growth. Um, you can probably see the questions coming up uh, now. Has the future role of SEZs to support economic growth changed as a consequence of the crisis? Um, yes, SEZ can support the trend towards nationalism. Um, I think Gustavo was mentioning um, the impact of regional and local supply chains. Yes, SEZ can adapt to disrupted supply chains. No, SEZs will continue as usual due to cost efficiencies and globalization. No, SEZ propositions are long-term in nature. Mr. Soleyam was mentioning uh, that, that you need a long-term, short-term strategy and not likely to be affected by the crisis. Uh, please, uh, please uh, cast your vote. So, on on this on this point, uh, Mr. Mr. Dragon, I'd like to ask you, uh, given your experience working with the business and economic development community, uh, what do you see as the role of SEZs in uh, in economic growth uh, in in the in the future? Uh, do you do you see it as a, a challenge 
given the way uh, the markets and supply chains are being affected or an opportunity? Okay, uh, during the times of crisis, uh, state, all the states uh, in the world uh, give tax benefit from uh, uh, our, uh, our customers, like uh, our, the production company, of course, like uh, the, all the state is free zone. Now we have uh, many measures from uh, states. This is measures is uh, 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 tax policy measures, non-tax policy measures, and uh, uh, of course in the measures to support investment, measures to stimulate stimulate employment. What uh, it is the role of the free zone now? What what might be? Uh, what the free zone uh, should offer uh, to uh, facilitating business in their users and tenants. Uh, we have three uh, things. Uh, first, we must uh, organize healthy, safe free zones. We have in the World Free Organization uh, one program, it is safety zones, but it is a safety zone about uh, uh, measures from uh, uh, against uh, illicit trade or something like that, but uh, healthy safe zones, it is uh, uh, must uh, organize measures for he, uh, healthy for employment and healthy from towns uh, and uh, measures in the logistic terminals are very, very important from logistics, uh, logistics activities. Mm. With the second is we must organize economic safe free zones. This is delay payment of rent on tenants to reduce our, our, our uh, taxes, to reduce our uh, uh, fees. We must reduce fees for our tenants to organize, to help him to, uh, for his business. And of course, delay debts. And it is one of these on one of these measures. Uh, it is very important for us also that uh, uh, we must uh, uh, or, uh, organize some cooperation with states and all the states measures in Serbia, we have a, a special uh, Serbian economic measures, uh, post uh, point payment of payrolls, uh, long uh, uh, maintaining liquidity and working capital for companies and many many measures we must organize these measures in the field of the free zones and uh, in one place in the free zone uh, uh, we uh, can um, uh, organize all the measures free zone measures and uh, state measures in one place and i think it is uh, for us uh, for us uh, it is good aim Thank you. So we're getting some interesting results from this question. Um, and that probably shows the uncertainty. So has the future role of SEZs to support economic growth changed as a consequence of the crisis? Um, I think uh, people are saying yes, 36% are saying yes, SEZs can adapt to disruptive supply chains, which is very encouraging to hear. Gustavo, I know you've been talking about this point a lot. and um, and another 35% are saying no, SEZs will, uh, will continue as usual due to cost efficiencies. Um, and uh, uh, I can't see the due to cost efficiencies and globalization links. Um, in, in South America, Gustavo, do SEZs play a big role in the overall economic development of the country? Uh, what is your view uh, on this question? Uh, okay. Now, in, the, in South America, you know, our free D zone are the most important uh, tool to attract uh, FDI for a long, for long time. Uh, so I think this is this continues in the future. Okay. So uh, actually, uh, for many for many years, the tax benefit is, it's have been the most important attractive, but we have spoke uh, before uh, it's not enough it's not enough in, in, in that time in which any uh, top companies in the world are technologies companies 
looking for uh, another uh, kind of services. Uh, so, in, in this context, uh, our strategy to continue attracting uh, investment, uh, thinking about digital strategies uh, of marketing of, of our region, uh, we are uh, put in, in, in uh, we are focused in the relocation. Uh, we have been spoken before. The relocation is uh, another of the trend of the consequence of this crisis, and uh, many many companies from Europe and uh, European companies, American companies, are thinking about uh, come back to the region or relocate uh, their, their product faces. And in this point, in our region, in our associate, association, uh, ASFA, we are working specifically in uh, develop uh, a special web page um, in, in four languages, Spanish, English, Portuguese, and Chinese, in, on, in order to promote the uh, scope available in our region, in our free trade zones. We understand it's not uh, the moment to visit us physically, and, and we think it's so important uh, to show our, uh, our ability, availability, our scope, our warehouse, our uh, infrastructure, uh, in the cloud. So, uh, for, for us, we are working, most important thing in our uh, digital strategies uh, right now is that it's working in this la LAN page. It's, it's called Relocate LATAM, mm -hmm. because we are looking for uh, this, uh, this attract of FDI. And, and I think uh, every Every strategy right now to attract FDI, uh, we we have to, to think about digital strategies. Thanks, Gustavo. Um, Mr. Mr. Haddad, Jabal Ali Free Zone accounts for 20% of Dubai's GDP. Um, you know, can you provide your views uh, for other special economic zones uh, developers and investment promotion agencies on this webinar on on your views how how SEZs um, can play such an important role and then recommendations uh, to ensure that SEZs can secure jobs can can adapt to the current challenges um, with some of these examples uh, we've all been hearing in this call uh, I think we seem to have lost Mr. Haddad. Mr. Suleim, do you do you do you want to provide your views on the role of zones in in economic growth, especially for like securing jobs uh, in this current climate? Of course. I mean, um, uh, while you're talking earlier about uh, uh, the roles of specialized zones uh, at the beginning of this webinar, I was thinking about how, how free zones actually bring more stability to the economy mm -hmm. because uh, businesses fully own their business. They fully have control of their uh, capital and their business. They do not need a local partner. Now, when these spend this, uh, ab un abnormal, strange situations, it's easy to have disputes and all that and, and and you need things to move fast so with an effective free zone like dmcc who contribute uh, as of 2019 uh, 10% if not more to the to dubai's gtp and we're we're we're, we're still relatively young if you compare us to jobs the jobs i believe is over 30 years or if not more um, and we're still growing so uh, the in, in, in Dubai's case, at least, uh, the, the DMCC is, uh, has been pushed to attract commodity trade via the, uh, the city and the country. Um, one thing we avoid doing is competing with our members. So there are roasting facilities in Dubai, but they're competing. And there are huge roasting facilities that don't have the activity that we have because the attraction, the, 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 the confidence and trust cannot come from a competitor. But when you're servicing the market, then it's different. You know, it's uh, think mm -hmm. of it as Dubai Airport for the coffee business. You know, we just serve. We're not competing with them, et cetera, et cetera. We don't even have our own Emirates Airlines 
within the place. So we, we, we were very conscious about this. I've rejected a few times uh, concepts of, you know, Dubai coffee or Dubai tea. I make sure that it doesn't encroach on the business. Um, with the gold bullion coin, you know, we've had, I've had uh, a number of proposals to put premium on the gold bullion coin, but my goal is always to have these UAE gold bullion coins distributed to as far as I can to all of the gold coins collectors. If you recall the first day of Eid, if you were in Dubai, we had a gold coin display on Burj Khalifa. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you saw that. Oh, you're basically, you're gonna get the WhatsApp from me. You're gonna see it because first day of the Eid Al-Abha, we're having a, another uh, display, which uh, I, it's gonna be more diamond flavored, let's say. Um, and I never thought they could uh, uh, outdo the gold bullion coin one. Um, I'd love to showcase it here, the gold bullion coin one, for everyone to see, because the decision making, getting this done, was very difficult. It wasn't difficult for me, but my 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 office were concerned. You have to imagine around Ramadan time when the documents were coming through the finance is this is not the right time. Businesses are cutting costs. You people are restructuring. And I had a different argument. I said, no, it is the right time. It's the first Eid where we're not celebrating with going to each other's house. We're not going to the palace. And I wanted to say thank you to the government. And, you know, it's within budget. And even if it wasn't, I put my name. Personally, I would, would have paid for it. And my team, get this, still start wanted to argue the matter saying, no, Ahmed, the optics of it, we're worried about you. So I'm taking the risk, which is something they don't like hearing because you know, we we do try we do try to take care of each other. Mm -hmm. I hope Samer can play the video. I mean, if you would give me Samer's possible, he doesn't like the idea. Fine, I'll WhatsApp mm -hmm. it to everyone. Uh, actually, you can put it on the what on the chat. Thank you, Samer. Wait, you yeah, see, why don't you put it on the chat I link? I have a disagreeable team here. Yeah. You know, they're they're not a bunch of yes men in DMCC, by the way. <laughs> in any case, we posted that, and if anything, uh, this is about a month ago or so. If anything, the gold was the number one investment tool. Nothing comes close to it. People's confidence and trust went to below zero in so many things. Not just you don't have just you know Warren Buffett apologizing for all the losses losses he's made in the aviation industry. It's everything was questionable. What if? What if? You don't have that with gold. Uh, with gold, especially gold coins, because they're easily dispersed in the market. You have the one ounce, half ounce, quarter ounce, one tenth of an ounce. Uh, Samar, I would like you to put it on the chat. Uh, you take yeah. your bit slow for me. Yeah, I mean, we, are, we are running out of time. We've got two minutes yes. left on this webinar, which has been really fascinating. And and thanks for some some uh, some very powerful messages and some very positive messages and being very honest with us, Mr. Salayam, Gustavo, Mr. Dragon, and Mr. Hada. Uh, I would like to thank you all, uh, the participants. There's some great questions coming in. Uh, we couldn't pick up all of them, but hopefully a lot of questions were answered. I would like to give you the, all the panelists one last chance, just in one line, sum up your view on SEZ's bringing in investor. One line, uh, and I will start with Mr. Gustavo. OK, one line. Headline. Uh, one line. Okay, the most important study right now, aftercare, aftercare your companies because right now every companies are thinking about relocate and as Untac uh, says, the sixty percent of the FDI in our countries is by the reinvestment of these companies. So if a company uh, chosen you in the past. The aftercare, the study of aftercare of these companies is the small, the, the, the most important right now. Thank you. Okay. Long, long line, but aftercare is really important. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Dragon, uh, one headline from your side, please. Uh, we must preparing all for us post crisis measures in three zones. Post crisis mm -hmm. measures. Thank you. Measure to support the recovery and tenant business and new investments attract. Absolutely, thank you. Mr. Salam, your one line headline message, please. As Wayne Gretzky says, uh, I don't go to where the puck is, I go to where the puck will be. I, I assure all of our uh, members and uh, and, and uh, potential members around the world, coffee, diamond, agri, cacao, 
we are upgrading our systems we're positioning ourselves to where you will be in the future and uh, and we and we need your feedback to have dmcc the uh, the prime option and the prime destination for all your needs thank you and um, mr uh, mr Haddad, sorry we we lost you for a few minutes um but i'll give you two lines uh, to finish up uh, what what is your what is your headline message for SEZs to tackle this crisis? First, innovate. Don't uh, be shy from investing in innovation and technology. Second, listen to your customers. They're the first line of innovation. Starts from your listen from listening to customers. They will give you the solution. They know the market better. They know the economy is better. And focus on developing your people and having the right people in your team. Thank you so much. I'll, I have had a pleasure meeting all of you. Thanks for all your points and thanks for all the questions and comments. Uh, Rashant, I'll hand it over to you for the closing messages. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to all our panel of experts for joining us today and from taking the time out uh, from the schedule and sharing the thoughts and perspective with us. I would like to thank once again our multilateral partner, Islamic Corporation for the Development of the Private Sector for sponsoring today's webinar. I would also like to thank our audience, uh, like others mentioned, for joining us and for sharing their questions. The link to today's webinar video will be sent to you via email. Uh, we are also conducting a short survey to get your feedback on today's webinar. The link to the survey will be shared to you via the chat and via email. Uh, to register for our next webinar, which is scheduled for the 21st of July, please visit our website, www.aimcongress.com slash webinars. Also follow us on our social media channels to keep yourself updated. Thank you all once again. Thank you to all our speakers for joining us and for sharing their interesting views with us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.